Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I have teamed up with Honda and we're going to be learning about how they were able to crank out over 700 horsepower out of a little 2.2 liter engine. Now Honda actually had me at the Belle Isle Grand Prix in Detroit where I not only had the opportunity to chat with a Honda performance development engineer to learn all about this engine but I also got to take a ride in the Honda IndyCar two-seater. So in this video, we're actually going to be comparing this 2.2 liter engine used in IndyCar versus the Honda Civic Type R engine. And when you look at these engines, they're both similar size, they're both turbocharged, and yet the power differential between them uh, is extraordinary. And so in this video, we're going to break down why does that power difference exist, what are the different strategies that these engines are using, and actually some of the similarities that exist between these two engines. So first off, the IndyCar engine is a 2.2 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine and it is producing over 700 horsepower. So 700 horsepower being a conservative estimate, Honda does not actually release the exact horsepower number for competitive reasons. And then in the Type R is a two liter inline four cylinder, which is also turbocharged and creating 306 horsepower. Now, one of the major differences between these engines is how high they rev. So the Indy engine, the 2.2 liter revving to 12,000 RPM, while the Type R engine is revving to 7,000. In RPM. And so within IndyCore, the rules allow for a maximum bore size of 95 millimeters. Now we don't know what Honda is using for their engine, but assuming they're using that maximum bore, then we can do some math and find out that the stroke of that engine is 51.7 millimeters. And so why would you want this short stroke? Well, that brings down your piston speeds and allows you to reach these really high RPM. And so if we do the math for the average piston speed with this 2.2 liter engine, we get 20.7 meters per second, assuming that stroke of 51.7, which assumes the 95 millimeter bore, or about 46.3 miles per hour. If we do that same math with the Type R, which has a much more square engine, 86 millimeter bore by 85.9 millimeter stroke, we get an average piston speed of 20.0 meters per second. So very close to the 20.7 meters per second of this IndyCar. So there are limitations as far as how fast combustion can occur and how fast pistons can move. And so you see that, you know, while these have very different uh, levels of RPM between them, the piston speeds are actually quite similar. Now, why might Honda choose to use that maximum 95 millimeter bore? Well, of course, as I explained to allow for that 12,000 RPM, to allow to, for those higher engine speeds, but also to allow for larger valves. So if they use larger valves, then they can have better airflow within that engine, which is of course very important when you're revving up to 12,000. So what about boost? Well, an interesting thing about IndyCar is that power is limited purely through limiting boost. And so depending on the style of the track, uh, there is a different boost limit put on the engine. And that is how ultimately those engines are capped in power. So there's no limit on how much fuel they can inject. They can use as much fuel as they like, uh, but the amount of air that goes into the engine is restricted by a boost limit and so that's ultimately what's limiting power now there's also a push to pass functionality on these indie cars uh, so for they have about 150 to 200 seconds depending on the track uh, of this push to pass boost that they can use at any time during that race and that gives them maximum boost pressure of 1650 millibar or 23.9 psi and about 700 horsepower so the engine ranging from about 550 to about 700 horsepower. Again, conservative estimates there. It's probably significantly higher than that, but somewhere in that region. And so using this push to pass, we're at 23.9 PSI versus the Honda Civic Type R, which is at 23.2 PSI for its peak horsepower, 306 horsepower at 65 100 RPM. So this of course leads us to the question, if both of these engines have a similar displacement and have similar boost, why is the power differential so great between them? So to get a more apples to apples comparison between the two engines, we're going to look at specific horsepower. So the 2.2 liter is making about 700 horsepower. 700 divided by 2.2 gives us 318 horsepower per liter. In the Civic Type R, we've got 306 divided by 2.0. That gives us 153 horsepower per liter. So what we're doing here is correcting for displacement. So we're trying to share, uh, you know, a common, which is just one liter displacement and see how much power do these things make. So now that we've corrected for displacement, we're going to move on to boost. So it is running slightly higher, 23.9 versus 23.2. So if we do the small correction for the little addition of boost that it has, 
we get about 312 horsepower per liter. And then of course this is revving significantly higher and horsepower is a function of RPM. So horsepower is equal to torque times RPM divided by 5252. So the fact that this has so many more power strokes occurring within a minute means it's able to make significantly more power. So if we take away that advantage in RPM with the Civic Type R making peak power at 6500 and we're going to assume this is making peak power at 12,000. We don't know the actual number where it's making peak power. However, we do know that using push to pass they actually increase the rev limit to 12,200. And so we know that it's probably still making good power at 12,000 RPM. So we're just going to assume that for this video that that's where our peak is at. So we take 312, we divide by that correction factor there and we get about 169 horsepower per liter, which is much closer to the Civic Type R's 153 once we start to account for the different things about this engine. But we still have a gap here between the two horsepower levels. So why is the IndyCar making more power? And this comes down to the fuel. And so in IndyCar they are running E85 or 85% ethanol, 15% gasoline versus the Honda Civic Type R, which is running 91 octane gasoline. Uh, so by using this E85, which has a much higher octane level, well over 100, could be around 108 for the octane level. This allows for, you know, advanced ignition timing. It allows for you to use a higher compression ratio. We don't know what the compression ratio used is within this engine. The Civic Type R is about 9.8 to 1, uh, but it allows for a bit more flexibility in things like boost in that compression ratio and your ignition timing, and so that can help squeeze out a few extra horsepowers. Uh, so that's ultimately giving you uh, that additional difference that you have right there. So hopefully this has been an interesting thought experiment, kind of showing, you know, there's many different strategies towards creating power and different ways of going about it. Uh, and so, you know, these two engines, uh, looking at them on the surface, you know, about two liters, similar boost, why do they make so much different power? Uh, and then kind of breaking that all down. The other thing is, you know, this engine used in IndyCar only needs to last about 2,500 miles versus the Civic Type R, of course, is coming with a long warranty. So there's differences that go into making engines uh, that have to last forever versus having to last, you know, just 20 500 miles. Uh, so difference is there. And also a cool thing that I got to experience while at the Belle Isle Grand Prix was the Honda two-seater. And I actually got to ride in it with Connor Daly. I was told by some of you guys that I was actually on TV, which is very cool. And it was just an awesome experience crazy to be going at those speeds with that much grip so close to the ground. So it was really neat to experience. A huge thank you to Honda for having me out and for sponsoring the video. And thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below. Now here is the Honda two-seater and it's being driven by Connor Daly, who finished 10th in last Sunday's Indianapolis 500. He is giving YouTube's Engineering Explained, Jason Fenske, a fabulous ride. How is it? How is it? Oh, it's insane. <laughs> it's hard to put into words. Connor doesn't have a whole lot of chit chat, which is great in a taxi driver, so I appreciate that. He seems to be getting us there very quickly. I'm having an awesome time. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. And you can see the forces there with the, uh, the helmet moving. It is quite the ride, and thanks to Connor Daly, and again, congratulations in that US Air Force car last weekend. We'll go racing in Detroit next.